day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yes, sir. I, I know it's sitting in that church that Sunday morning. The only reason I went to that church, I woke up one Sunday morning and been out all night long. I'm partied and smoked and slept and sacked everything I can get my hands on. And I'm laying there in bed that Sunday morning. Didn't get up, stayed in bed to about 12 o'clock. I'm just thinking. Think about how it was rained. Think about all the hardship I've gone through. Think about the loss of my mom. Think about all these things that I happened that happened to me. Think about I got a job now. I'm making fairly decent money. I got a little money in my pocket, but I'm laying there and all of a sudden I said to myself, it's still something missing. Yeah, yeah. I, I will never forget that day, Ben Talk. I believe it was that that moment mm -hmm. when I acknowledged that too. I look, I got all the things that I thought would make me happy, God. When I was poor working and couldn't didn't have money to buy the necessities in life. I said, if I ever got some money, I'd be satisfied. Well, I got it now, and I still ain't satisfied. There's something missing. Hmm. I think right there is what God, God said, that's the starting point right there. That's the starting point. If you don't ever come to that place, he won't be able to sanctify you and preserve you. Hmm. At some point, you're vulnerable, more vulnerable, to falling away. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. If you go to a place where you, you can't find satisfaction in this world, that you know that what you long for can't you can't hold it in your hand, and you know there's got to be something. Else, God said, "All right, now we can work with it. We can work with it." Yeah. And I thought, I bet that's who the gospel is for. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah. then, then, then you start moving away from milk to meat because you have a desire to do so and then that relationship of being hearing from him well i think you i think your desire to move from milk to meat is once you realize the love and desire to love back then you want to know mm -hmm. And in trying to know, mm -hmm. you move from milk to meat. But most people bring their body to church and leave their mind at home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, about to drive me crazy. Mm. Almost knocked my computer up. I saw that. Um, now you give us a tour. <laughs> so I, I, I just think, you know, you, you get saved. And then, you know, there's there's a, a, a hunger and a desire at first, but they're not getting the sustainment of that to have a desire to move from milk to meat. And so they're just constantly being fed. Yeah, yeah. I think once you once you start feeding yourself is when is when you move from milk to meat. I think so too. You, what you're saying is is when you start to make it real to you. You know, <laughs> the, we were talking a couple of weeks ago. He's we saying that word becomes real to you. You know, that testimony. Let me ask you a question. Uh, I had my grandson here with me last week, and. Uh, one of the things we notice is, is that when that rascal get hungry, you got to move. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, I never told him to get hungry. <laughs> my wife never went in and told him, okay, baby, come on, you need to get hungry now. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. My, my daughter never had to say to him, look here, baby, now look at time and going by, you need to get hungry. Uh -huh. Somehow, hunger is built into the nature of the life that is in it. Wow. I, I cannot think that the life of God is any different. Mm. I don't think God can leave it up to you to get hungry. Mm. For you to think, I think the nature of the life that is in you is yearning and panting for God. It is, it, 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 it is, it is ravaciously hungry for God. Okay. Now I think that what you have to do is just 
they, 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 that commercial said a long time ago, and I like the commercial. All you can do is, do is obey your thirst. <laughs> your thirst. <laughs> thirst for righteousness. Yeah. 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 That's ob obey your hunger. Mm -hmm. You I, know, I, it, I, I, I hear you, and I understand, and I believe you, because I've witnessed this, and I've experienced, you know, that thirst. But when you have that thirst and you're not getting anything to satisfy it, then that thirst will dissipate over time. Mm. Oh, I, I, I don't listen. Listen, I, I, went, I went through 30 years of it. I went through this. I went through 30 well, years. I'm, I'm talking about after this is my personal experience after being saved. Mm -hmm. You know, grew grew up in the church. You know, was was made to go to church, and you know, as a, as a child, you you're learning these Bible stories, but they really don't bring them to a level where they apply to me. These are just stories as right. I'm growing up, right? And so, and I'm seeing the older people. You know they they they're experiencing something different, and I don't understand it. And then when I get older, I'm still not understanding because I got this pulling to go and play football on Sunday instead of being in church on Sunday. Uh -huh. okay, you know, pop on a football and right. and, uh, and to uh, start doing things uh, like just sports and and a lot of sports. Ironically, the games were on Sunday. <laughs> right. So. You know, over the years, not being able to participate in that, it just really kind of threw me off. And then I'm just sitting in there really not getting a full understanding of what's going on in there because the lessons for for me as a, as a child was never made to relate to me okay. as a child. There was just stories that we read and learned. Mm -hmm. And then as a teenager, of course, when I'm able to make my own decisions, I quit going to church. Uh, but I knew that there was something about it that I, I had always wanted to understand. Yeah, yeah. And I knew that my life was based off of the church. But there was a, a, a time when I was going to go play on a Saturday and I heard the church was right, like right down the street from my house, maybe like three three houses across the street and down in the cul-de-sac. And so when I was going to go play, I heard them in the church. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, it's Saturday. And so once I got up to the doors to find out what was going on, there was a, one of the mothers had one of her sons tearing at the altar. Mm -hmm. You know, just crying out to Jesus, just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And it 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 intrigued me and so she kind of saw me and then she gave me a look like you know you can come on up here and do the same thing and not even knowing what he was doing okay yeah, yeah. and uh and, and in my mind i still had a uh uh some kind of sense that he was trying to be saved and give his life to god right. and he was just hollering out jesus save me jesus 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 just you know on and on and on just repetitive and so i just got on my knees and did the same okay and and i believe that there don't know how long i was there but i do believe there was a change in my life because things i saw things a little different okay and there were some things that i did that i just didn't want to do anymore and so uh fast forward you know that not being fed mm -hmm. that kind of dissipated yeah, yeah. So now I'm back out in the street. Right. And um, so when I'm, I'm, I'm in my late teens and I'm out there and I mean, I'm, I'm getting high, I'm drinking, I'm hanging out with, with some of the thuggish friends, <laughs> you know, that I, I know. Um, I got a stolen stereo getting put in my car. Um, I'm working for a, uh, a janitorial, commercial janitorial system. And anytime I saw something in any of them buildings I want, I took it. 
Mm-hmm. And um, so in the midst of one day, just sitting up there while, while this guy was putting this, this stereo in my car and I got all this this weed on me and we getting getting drunk and just sitting up there, just music playing loud, just a whole bunch of, probably like 12, 15 of us just up there on the hill. And then I quit hearing the music and it got kind of quiet as I just stared off over the bay. And I heard God talk to me. Okay. And basically he said, you're either going to die or go go to prison if you do not come to me. Mm-hmm. And so in that I was I was kind of like just spaced out and thinking about all the stuff that that I was doing and it, it made me think about my life and I just told the guy to take the stereo out of my car I threw all the dope I had to one of the guys that was over there and I got in my car and I started driving down the street and God said those same things to me again and it was so real and it made me aware that where I was heading and so then I gave my life to God as I was driving down the hill and I just began to bawl and I began to thank him you know for for warning me and for for saving me for the road, you know, from from going down the road I was going on, and uh, and then on the inside I was aware that there was a big difference, and I can see the relation to the adults mm. that I used to watch in school how this was real, right, 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 and uh, and personal, and so. <laughs> I get all the way down the hill and I'm in a in a neighborhood that's not so friendly. And uh, I'm look up and I'm just praising God in my car. Tears, snot, everything. Just just bawling and, and just thanking God and giving him glory. And there's a car of four people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should say four, four enemies, so to say. And it seemed like everything slowed down. Now I'm driving and it looked like they're all looking at me. And I'm praising God and I heard a voice. Are you going to stop praising me so that they won't see? Woo! Okay. And so I had a choice. And so I just kept on giving God praise and glory. And them dudes was, I mean, they had the gas face on and they were looking at me all mean and stuff. And then when they really were able to see me, it was like, this dude crazy, we might wanna leave him <laughs> alone or something. Because they kind of like just turned away and kept going. And then that's when I just blew up because uh-huh. I knew it was real then. Because it wasn't, it wasn't for them. Yeah. It was just for me. And I didn't care if they saw me crying, you know, being less than what was known as a, a man, you know, a, street cred and all that other stuff and so then I just I just immediately got so excited and I drove and I was my sister lived down across from that area and I was heading in that direction so I went over there because I just had to tell somebody and tell somebody had to had to witness uh-huh so I go busting in her house and I'm, I'm saying I'm saving everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy Woo-hoo. and then I realized the person who had been praying for me all this time. Come on now. Was my mom. <laughs> and I mean, she used to be on her knees early in the morning, like an alarm clock, waking people up in the house, just giving God prayer, just asking to save her children, you know, to keep us safe, you know, and, and so on and so forth, and just wailing and, and speaking in tongues and, and the whole nine, just on her knees every morning. And so I had that in my mind when I told my sister and her husband, and they looking at me like, you know, this boy done lost his mind. I hopped in my car and I drove up the hill. Come on. And I come busting in the door to tell my mom. I said, mama, mama. She said, my baby's saved. <laughs> and, and everything that I wanted to tell her just went out the door 
And I'm in shock that she knew. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, God told you? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> and so, man, we just rejoiced in everything. And there was a, a true hunger for the word, for understanding. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get it. Okay, let me, let, me, let me help you out with something. I, I understand all this. Okay, turn to Philippians chapter 1. Okay. Yeah. We have to be careful now that we don't know uh, that our understanding of something doesn't conflict. In Philippians chapter 1, this is what this will call it. Uh, he says, uh, after his introduction in verse 2, he says, Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, okay. that he which has begun a good work in you Okay. We'll perform it okay. mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. the day of Jesus Christ. Until uh -huh. come, the old folks say, "Come hell or high water, but come what may, he will." Uh -huh. He goes on to the end in chapter two, verse number thirteen. He says, "For it is God which worketh in you." Not you. Uh -huh. You can't leave it up to you. It's God that worketh in you. Mm -hmm. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, this thing has to be God wrong. Okay. Amen. Okay. And all I'm saying is, now we can go through things that condition us to change our priority, whereby things get pushed down to a lower level, but that ain't God. That's because that, that's choices that we make. Okay. Yeah. You don't you don't have to because you ain't listen. There are some folk when they ain't getting true, do crazy stuff. Like I ain't gonna eat or sleep until you <laughs> there'll be some men who books I read that did some crazy stuff. Wasn't getting fed, who declared I ain't gonna eat or sleep or do nothing until I hear from you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all I'm saying is in spite of all the circumstances that we are confronted with and the variety of different experiences that men have, I believe that once the Spirit of God rests upon you and dwells in you and begins to do what he do, you don't have to worry about getting hungry. Hmm. What you got to decide is how long, and, and like in my case, I, I, I can honestly testify that, that since that day I sat in that church, and was brought on the conviction by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. I, listen, I, listen, I've been through some serious rough stuff. Okay. But, but God has never let my hunger or thirst or panic from Him wane. It, 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 it's not something that I have to I have to conjure up. It's not something that I have to get. It is it's just there. What I have to do is decide whether or not I'm more honored. Yeah. Right. right. Decide whether or not. And I see, so I arranged my life like this. This is how I live my life. I told God, I will offer some promotions at Robin Air Force Base. I said, look, I don't want to get in no position where you cannot continue to have the first place in my life. Woo. I want to live in such a way that I don't care what happens. I can drop what I'm doing. Come on. The nature of it, how serious it is. I don't ever want to get in a place well, I can get, I can get bound up and can't get to your, your movie in my life. So I don't want no job. Mm. Mm. I don't want no situation that's gonna ever get in the way of that. Wow. And I've lived my whole life that way. I tell people, so, so when I, when I got the union road, when I finally, finally realized God was calling me to pass, I said, look, you call me. You can call me at 2 o'clock, you can call me at 5 o'clock, you can call me if I just got off work, it don't matter. Because you see, understand, see, I understand that God is calling me to this. Yeah. There was a song that was written years ago 
And when I heard that, when I just hear that song, I used to just cry, man. People are like, why you get so upset with that song? That song says, Lord, I'm available. Oh, yes. Yeah, to you. That's a good song. 